What up my freaks, Robinus and Sight here with part 3 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Torox the Brass Bull campaign. So as we saw last, oh wow, was that, was that thing always that big? Uh, sl Slanashi giggle, but uh, <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean the glow. Uh, I guess that's the glow from the ritual. Huh. I don't know if it was that big last episode, but uh, well, either way. Uh, I'm getting distracted, as I tend to do as we saw last time. The doom of men is already upon them, as the imperial city Altdorf has fallen to the rage of the Brass Bull. We have also acquired Morgur the Shadow Gave and given him the first bitter moat of an army, though of course we'll be upgrading it or devolving it into Chaos Spawn and whatever it is that Morgur the essence of chaos likes as soon as we can uh, what we're going to do this episode is move around maybe try to get another legendary lord on the field and we'll start off by attacking Boris Toddbringer uh, hopefully we won't be able to kill off Boris before Kazrak his rival makes it onto the field but hey no promises before we jump into that battle though it looks like we did reach the engagement threshold so this episode will be an hour long and the offer stands if we get 400 likes and 60 comments and then the next episode will be an hour long as well there was also a question that I well, or a thing that I got confused by and or missed a last episode with regards to how we get more god gores and as a few of you pointed out in the comments of last episode and there's a red text right here that I completely missed saying god's gores capacity is increased with every tier horde now it doesn't have that red text in the first levels of this but it does have it here and yeah i just <laughs> i just missed it and now i'm embar i'm embarrassed are you happy are you happy i'm embarrassed well you should be i certainly can't and won't catch everything and i really do appreciate it and when you guys do especially when my attention span takes i don't know let's say a sharp dip with anything not involving the glorious spectacle of combat. Speaking of, Morgur, away you go. Let's have a, a debut battle for you, sir, against a Boris Toddbringer. And we don't get the ambush, but that's okay. His army ain't in great shape, and though it, apparently it says Pyrrhic victory, I think we can... Uh, <laughs> I think we can certainly uh, do a little bit better than that. A Razor Standard is gonna go on our Regiment to Renown and the Black Horns Ravagers, and we have plenty of hands and fast movers in general to make quick work of the enemy's crossbows and crush this army. Away we go. Oh wow, Morgur actually said something. I am not used to that, both from Grimgor and to some degree uh, from Torox as well. Anyway, and Morgur's debut battle has finally arrived, and unfortunately for us in this particular uh, army, he is the only one without Vanguard deployment. Granted, Chaos Spawn won't have Vanguard deployment either, so he will be joined by plenty of units that won't, but for now, uh, he's the only one. Anyway, we're gonna get to try out our Centigors. We have both of the Spear and Shield, or Buckler, I guess, because those are some tiny, tiny shields. Uh, a variety and the Great Sword a variety as well, or Great Weapons, a yeah, Great Weapon variety, uh, who will be hopefully charging in and doing a decent amount of damage, though I imagine the Great Weapons will be a little bit wasted on the crossbows. They do have armor, Imperial State Troops and all that to some degree, after all all, and are in fact more heavily armored and then the centigors themselves we also have the black horns ravagers this is their debut battle as well and ooh those are some uh, nice horns on a few of them i like the uh, the jacob's ram type horns always look very nice yeah, there's some uh, some uh, very nice looking horns on some of those beastmen. I wonder if they ever have any uh, 
any kind of a horn contest. Not the kind of Slaneshi horn contest, but anyway. Uh, the last units that we are also going to debut here will be the Tuscagore Chariots, and we gotta enjoy these things while we can, because frankly they'll probably get replaced by uh, Razor Gore Chariots in every army. And then of course the Hounds of Pestilence. I absolutely love uh, this particular unit. It's quite nice. It's got anti-large, it's got poison, it's got area attacks, and even has a regeneration in this particular case. So yeah, we're gonna be using them in a few armies, especially the Nurgle themed army, but a couple others as well. Kazrak buffs Warhounds, and I do believe he should buff these guys as well. But if he doesn't, I guess then we won't. <laughs> I don't remember if he buffs only the uh, regular Warhounds and Mutant Warhounds, or the Hounds of Pestilence as well, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, the lines have been drawn on Gores facing off against enemy state troops, and the Gores, I'm sure, and dishing out uh, much better damage. And then the young Gores, in fact, forcing a few units to run and absolutely wrecking some Halberdiers. Nice to see some Gores on the field, finally. Well, I guess not so much fun. Finally, it's not like we're so many episodes in yet, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we've been making do with piles of Ungors for uh, for a little bit too long. Over here we have Boris versus the pile of Chaos Spawn that Morgar has summoned, and this is the uh, Beastman Chaos Spawn var variant. As in, they were clearly formed from, uh, uh, from Beastmen, as you can see those... Uh, horns and the remains of their uh, and the remains of their goatish forms as well and it's a pretty nice little chaos spawn otherwise the enemy army is getting absolutely obliterated which is why I wanted to slow it down at first because uh, we were able to surround them charge them and destroy them extremely quickly and especially with those centigors smashing into the enemy back while the well s not maybe so much anvil of the ungors but uh, they serve the anvil purpose this time around, weak though they may be. Anyway, a few more enemies to destroy. Oh, actually, it doesn't look like it as the rest of the enemy army will shatter, and the battle will be ours. Boris did manage to dish out some decent damage to Morgar, though, so good job to him. Uh, but I'm sure the uh, Chaos Spawn and Morgar will run him down, um, but that can be done off screen. All right, very nice, very nice, an auspicious start to Morgar's story in this campaign, I think. And while I would love to heal, I think we have to, uh, we have to take the money here. I know, I know, it's going to hurt our bestial rage, but there's a reason for this. We need like 15, 12 to 15k, I believe. Let me just figure out exactly how much we need in a second. Uh, Morgar, you're going to march on over this way, in fact, in a few seconds. And what we would like to do is this. First of all, we're going to go to Diplomacy. We're going to talk to Clan Septic. And we're going to ask you to join war against Karoberg, who are right there. And... Get 3.7k. It's not bad. It's not. It's not great, but it's not bad. Once again, I don't really care about these uh, Skaven factions, but hey, if they're willing to furnish us with cash, uh, then uh, well, we gotta make use of it. Morgar, I would like you to go this way, close, at least relatively close, uh, to Torox. Then, while you're here, we need you to recruit four Razor Gores, one Chaos Spawn, and one giant Feral Matka. Oh man, that's gonna be, ah. Uh, Oh, actually, the Pharaoh Manticore is going to take two turns. Maybe we can hold off on that one. One, two, three, four, and then five. Okay, so I think we're going to have to get rid of the regular Beastman Warhounds. We can always get them back. And, hmm, do we get rid of some of the Young Gores? We need enough space in both armies to do this, but we also need Morgar to be the one building most of it. I think Torox may have just a few too many Ungors of various kinds. Hmm. I guess the, you know what, just get, just do this. Uh, put one of these together, delete one of them, that gives us space for three. And I guess delete a couple of Ungor Spears as well. We're gonna swap some stuff around. 
and then we'll 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 add whatever is missing into it after. You sir are gonna build four of these. There we go. Won't quite be everything we want to build, but it'll get uh, it'll be pretty up there. Torox, you sir are going to I guess go into ruination stance and hit Karoberg. What do we have in terms of defenses here? I mean, they have some stuff. Uh, this is... it's actually similar, but probably weaker than the defenses that we fought at uh, Altdorf. Do we need to essentially fight the same battle? Hmm... I'm disinclined to think so, to be perfectly honest. I think we're better off moving up here to Grossfer or uh, Fassberg. We still need... yeah, we still need to get to Grossfer and get that ruin up and running. Hopefully the rats don't steal it from us as they... well, they very well might. But we'll have to see. You know, take this out, just out of resolve it, it's fine. Yeah, a little bit of damage, but once again, it's fine. And uh, get that money, get that XP, and... Ooh, 2.5k. I'd like to heal, but we need the money. Loot and rise. And don't move too far. Okay. Uh, you can go into raiding stance now. Can't travel very far, unfortunately. But you're gonna go here. And then I want you both to do this. Go into Hidden Encampment, and then both of you build up the Impaled Corpses. The Dread Gained is only an extra plus 25 per turn, but plus 50 per turn between both armies, I think is going to be very well worth our time. And hopefully also worth our money. Uh, we are relatively good in terms of everything else. These guys are damaged, and I guess we could replace them if we wanted to. Sound like we were... Yeah, I mean, I guess we can do so. Uh, you guys... On two, and then three. I don't see any reason not to be doing this repeatedly. Very nice. Uh, okay, you're a regiment of renown, so we can't get you back, and we're actually going to delete the Ungor Raiders and probably the regular Beastmen Warhounds as well, unless we're gonna. Unless we're going to give them to Morgur, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Either way, to Grossfer we go after we trade these armies, and then we're going to head Torox this way to fight orcs and dwarfs and dead and whatnot, and Morgur to probably take out Talabeklan before looping through uh, the Golden Order's territory and then back around to Athaloran, which is his ultimate goal. Uh, low Beast Jewel Rage, not to worry, we'll work on that. I guess we can quell Animosity here for a little bit. It'll be a little bit of damage, but we also don't care that much. Torox is leveled up, which gives him, ah, Demonic Vigor. And cooldown, 25% reduction of Blood Beast, Brass Body, and Rune Tormented Axes, though I don't believe we have the latter. But Perfect Vigor and Banner of Eternal Hatred are nice. He's already a very, very strong fighter, even without putting any points into any of his abilities, so, yeah. Alright, happy with that, Torox? Is there anything else we want to get? Can we build the Bray Shaman building? No, it costs 6k. Hmm. It might be nice, because when we can get to Cataclysmic Rage, we could go for a uh, Recruit Rank plus 5 for Bray Shamans via this. Because it's not like we'll be able to get the Minotaurs and, and any of the other heroes up and running yet. Bray Shamans are the easiest ones to acquire. And we can get a Bray Shaman for Morgur, since Morgur doesn't have any uh, casting. At least not any purposeful casting. He's kind of a, a walking, corrupting, winds of magic conduit, but he's not actually casting, per se. Regardless of what we say. Alright, we just we also gotta make sure that these guys don't take Altdorf back, especially since we've gotten the ritual to a pretty darn nice level. Now that would be <laughs> Oh that would be really unfortunate. Let's just hope it doesn't happen. And hey, another little army here. Oh, did they just destroy the rats here? Ooh, and I notice you're probably moving to Karoberg to occupy it. I'm tempted to betray them and just destroy these armies, but we can always come back and betray them later. For now, I think we might need them to uh, uh, ask for money to declare war. Now, Morgur and Torox. We've got 550 Dread, working on our next Lord. Got to get two rituals going, and then we'll be able to get to either Kazrak or Malagor. Probably Malagor, since I played Kazrak last time. I played Beastman a few years ago now. Anyway, I'm uh, going to raiding, despoiling. And you the same. Then we're gonna get rid of... Let me see if I can do this correctly. We have... You know what? We're gonna give all of this to Torox right now. 
So we'll need to make space for all of these guys. And, well, I guess we can just swap directly. All right, so... Morgur, you're going to gross first, so you're going to go here. And you're going to go here. And then we're going to trade all of this, because he already has plenty of fast movers in the Wii, in the form of the Centigors. And do we want to give the Tuscore Chariots? You know what, frankly, we're going to get rid of the Tuscore Chariots, or rather, we're going to give them to Kazrak, because he loves Chariots. I think he actually loves Razor Gore Chariots, but you know. Until Kazrak is up and running, you can hold on to them. Then you can take the Ungor Raiders and the Beastmen Warhounds, and we need to give you two more, which I guess is going to be... Eh, probably a couple more Spears. Now you know what? Get a couple more non-Spears. Since we have the Regiment of Renowned Spears, we could go a little bit more Spear-heavy in Torox's army. Something like this. All right, I think that's good enough. We still have capacity for a few other things, and frankly, I'd probably just rather replace the Ungor Raiders with Harpies and stuff, but only when we can move again. And in the meantime, you, sir, are going up here to Grosfer, and Torox, you're going to Scheinfeld. Hmm. I guess we could use some momentum right now as well to continue the fight. Is there anything here worth fighting? No, not really. If only we could get to your momentum back. We could have taken Grossfer right now and not been worried about uh, Altdorf. But uh, you should be able to reach it next turn unless I'm mistaken, and it's not like it has any defenders. Anyway, how many more turns do we have the... Ooh, yeah, we gotta use, we gotta use the uh, replenishment while we can. Replenish the movement, we're down to four momentum, gotta be careful about that. We'll pop you into... I don't want to waste the movement, so I'm tempted to say not Ruination Stance, but rather any of the other stances. On the other hand, we're kind of stuck here, aren't we? Because we'll have to jump over anyway. So but that really, it doesn't really matter what we do. Minus the Vigor in Battle being tired, making us take more damage. Yeah, just go in Ruination Stance. Wait, no, 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 no. That gives us reduction post-battle loot. I lied. And go for Gathering Herds. Now take this. And hopefully the orcs or somebody gives us a good fight. Uh, Gift of Chaos, armor piercing, weapon damage plus five. You can go on these guys, I guess. Eh, why not? Not resolve. Teensy bit of damage and 920 to raise. Well, we did want to get that Bray Shaman building. Yeah, fine. Loot and raise. And then don't move. Oh, would you please stop trying to move away from that? A Book of Assure. That's not a horrible thing to have, but I think these don't work unless specifically the Lord holds it. And I'm not sure any of our current Lords would be able to. Like, for example, we have 105 out of 105. If we give this to you, we still have... No, we have 105 out of 125. Oh, I'm wrong. Oh, okay, well then that thing is much more useful. Huh, I wonder why I thought it was only Lords. Uh, Torox, stop stop shaking. Torox, Torox relax. Relax. <laughs> you really want... To <laughs> he really wants to get into combat. He's literally shaking. Uh, let's go into Juggernaut raiding. We can't cross the river, so we'll jump over the river. Or Underway Stance, or uh, Beast Path Stance. That's the one. Too bad we can't use this as a port. Huh. Actually, I wonder if you could go out to see... I mean, you could, but you probably wouldn't heal up and we'd have to hit Schinderheim. Schilderheim. Eh. Yeah, that's not the worst thing in the world. It's not like we're that damaged. And you could land right here. Hey, you know what? Try to go out to sea. You can go out to sea. All right, then we'll land here and hit this next turn. And oh, we're still healing here. We're just not raiding. All right, you know what? I'm happy with that. I'm quite happy with that indeed. Uh, Days of Wrath, Diacide is nearly done. Everything else I think is fine. Just double checking if we can declare or need to declare war on anybody that we haven't yet. You're fighting with Wargrove Woe, but they're a little bit far from us, so we'll wait on that. We'll also want to raise a new herd stone at Aleheart, so we gotta go there. Skip this, skip that, and Torx, did you level again? You did not, so we'll end the turn, and we'll proceed. All right, moment of truth. Hopefully nobody comes for Altdorf, or I'm gonna be real salty. Or whatever we're calling it now. And hey, 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 Barrow Legion, how dare you take Uber's Reich? Those are our ruins, and you needed our permission to go there. Uh, Clan Skull, let me guess, you want us to... No, defensive... Oh, 2,000 gold. It's tempting, but do we want a defensive alliance with these guys? 
willing to give us 2.4k. You know what? If they're willing to give us 2.4k now, they might be willing to give us more later. So let's wait on it a little bit. Mm, nickel and dime them a little bit to get more stuff built. And ah, we got somebody moving in to defend this place. And though I'm sure it won't be all that effective. All right, looks good. And the quest has been issued. This is probably Morgur's quest. Uh, for the stave of ruinous corruption. Now, Morgur's quest should be done as early as possible, uh, though that is a fairly concerning amount of uh, various kind of wood elves. Yeah, 500 dread and the casualty control plus 25. Uh, no, the reason you want this is because it increases unit capacity for the chaos spawn, and giving Morgur his signature unit. Oh, Talibeklin is now confederated. If nothing else, we're forcing a lot of confederations. Uh, you, sir are going to go into Gathering Herds and hit Grossfer. Yes. All right, and close victory. Really, this? Oh, let's see how badly this damages us. Oh, wow. Huh. Okay, so I see the Auto Resolve hates the Tusk Gore Chariots. Uh, kind of reminds me of the War Sleds, which I actually love using, but I can't stand the Auto Resolve hurting them all the time. And this is unfortunate, but hopefully the same does not apply to the Razor Gore Chariots. You know, there are certain units that the Auto Resolve really despises, just like the Giants in my current Grim Gore campaign. Hmm. Well, either way, we're gonna raise. You, sir, stop moving, and while I would love for your bestial rage to grow further, I think we're going to go into Hidden Encampment, replace a few units, and then head to Fassburg. We are also basically maxed out, so 38 marks of ruination. Perform that ritual. And very nice, Morgur has himself a Chalice of Dark Rain and ritual completed. Brayher descends, the Slaughterhorn Trud, the gaze of the Dark Gods is upon you, which means we've leveled up to the next level. Yes, yes, army capacity plus two, which also means 400 more points and we'll be able to get another, uh, another legend up and running. Do we want you for any reason? Oh, actually, we do want you for a reason. It's a very simple reason indeed. You, sir. Get on the field. At no cost, mind you. Go into Hidden Encampment. And... Oh. Ah, more... <laughs> Damn, no. That won't work. I was hoping to build a giant feral manticore on Morgur's army. Well, there goes that plan. Well, you can build some basic stuff and then we can delete you. You can just follow Morgur around for 400 more dread. Uh, get some Beastman Warhounds in there. Morgur. You got three spaces. Build a few things. Uh, let's say replace a few of your Ungors. You two. And you two. Two Ungors with axes. And the you two. And the you guys. Eh, well, I mean, if we get Malagor next, we'll probably want the Harpies to go to Malagor, so. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah, replace one of you, I guess. Maybe I should have just replaced one of the Ungor Spears, but whatever. It really doesn't matter all that much. And the rest is fine for now. And then you can build stuff as well, which you're doing. Good. Torox, yeah. you're up next on the, well, not the chopping block, but, you know. Uh, who are you at war with? You're at war with Karak Ziflin and Marienburg. I'm willing to bet that we can ask neither one of you to join the war, so unfortunately, since these guys aren't at war with any of the Skaven, we can't actually force them to, uh... Hmm. Okay, well, we can't get any free money, essentially, for attacking them, but we can just straight up attack them, so... There's still that. Uh, declare war. Yeah, yeah, declare war. No point in allying with you, and Torox land here and destroy. Despoil. Close victory and medium casualties. Ugh, it's our first fight against the orcs, though. Should we take it just for fun? Hmm, let me see here. I want to see what's going on at Aleheart. Comparatively. Oh, Aleheart's basically dead because of the rebels. Oh, you better not take that, Mr. Wulric Pulsator. <laughs> not a bad name. Uh, oh, he has a war shrine of Slanash. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, you know what? I know that this is a minor battle, but we haven't fought orcs yet, and we haven't used our razor gores yet, so let's use them. Run. 
Alrighty, here we go, charging forth. Ah, oh, you gotta love those minotaurs and their charges. Our right into the enemy works, and it looks like the enemy has a unit of boar boys deployed out front, which are relatively fragile, and I'm sure uh, that Torox, together with his minotaur pals, will be able to clean them up easy. In fact, they've already lost roughly half of the HP they started with and will be breaking shortly, I'm sure. Now, this is the column map, as in the map that always forces the AI, for whatever reason, to deploy in this column formation, which I'm gonna say means that the AI is pretty much screwed. We're just gonna work our way through the enemy units one at a time, essentially, and bring them down. Although on the bright side, I suppose since we don't really have range, that means that uh, this column formation doesn't hurt the AI nearly as much as it might otherwise do. And because if obviously if we had range, we would be able to very much capitalize on that enemy formation, but if it's melee versus melee, by and large, we'll have to work our way through them. Anyway, a devolution comes down to give that lovely effect while we continue making our way into the enemy army, while our newly acquired Razor Gores and Hounds of Pestilence and try to get around the bulk of the enemy host in order to try to silence the various Error Boys, and the Goblin Wolf Rider Archers, and possibly get into combat with those orc boar boys in the background. I want to see those razor gores do their thing. They're going to charge in, try to apply some of that bleed effect and that they have to the enemy in combination with the poison from the Hounds of Pestilence. Also got to love the fact that the Hounds have a, a 32 model count, not 80 like the regular Warhounds, which makes them a lot less likely to lose piles of models. Anyway, we got a Vile Tide coming in and getting some very nice air on a few of those boys boys and uh, that at the same time as that devolution and it looks like the enemy main host is having a pretty bad day. Torox is dueling a pair of black orc big bosses but I would imagine uh, that uh, boar or not boar uh, they have no chance against the bull. Over in the background let's get back to those uh, razor gores because I'm interested in that. See them uh, dish out a little bit more hurt. And I believe they're fighting some orc biggins here who have both bleed and lethal poison on them, taking uh, that extra damage. Gotta remember that uh, these guys can apply bleed and lethal poison. Hmm. And just to add to the possible combination of damage over time effects that we're going to be stacking in Morgur's army, not this army, but, uh, well, uh, this ain't too bad of a combo for any army. To be fair. Anyway, Razor Gores and Hounds of Pestilence charge in, and now uh, the enemy, or the enemy biggins in this particular case, are crushed in between an anvil and a hammer of both Razor Gores. And the Razor Gores aren't all that fragile with 50 armor, uh, even if their melee defense is low. Uh, their HP is pretty good for uh, 12, uh, uh, 12 units, and they're very fast at 79, so even if they do get in trouble, uh, they can get the heck out should be a very a useful unit in the early to mid game in particular. Anyway, it looks like the enemy boys are surrounded everywhere and it looks like they will finally, well, maybe not so finally, but they will just plain shatter. And not a particularly long battle, but long enough at least for uh, Torox, though the spotlight I guess wasn't on him as much as the Razor Gores today, uh, to defeat both of the enemy Black Orc big bosses. I think he might have killed one of the mob now he forced them both to run one with 24 hp and then it looks like the rest of the army shattered before we even needed to get to that night goblin big boss anyway i don't believe we actually need to chase here All right, very nice and necessary or not, though I think we're trending towards a necessary. It was a fun little fight and showed the pretty darn good combination of those Razor Gores together with the Hounds of Pestilence, both of which did pretty darn decent damage. They won't stay 
in this particular army, uh, but it's a combo that we might use another one. We got bleed application from the Razor Gores and poison application from the uh, Hounds of Pestilence combining, especially when used in concert, and then the Razor Gores are anti-infantry and the Hounds of Pestilence are anti-large, and uh, yeah, it just works. It just works reasonably well. Just too bad that the Razor Gores aren't Vanguard deployed, but Oh well, uh, I guess not everything can be. Uh, we are going to... Uh, I really want that shaman thing. We can afford it now, I guess, but at the same time, we're going to need... Hmm. We weren't that damaged. You know what? No, still loot and, loot and raise. Loot and raise, and... Eh, stop moving. Uh, let's go into Juggernaut raiding. Can't, ten, can't send us further. At Tusk score Chariot for Brabener. I don't know whether we care about that, but ooh, Grog Hooves of Wolf's Run, Centigors with Throwing Axe, good for Morgur, though speaking of Morgur, before I forget, we want you to have that Shaman's Flame Pit, so that we're ready when we have that Cataclysmic Rampage up and running. Otherwise, you need to heal a little bit more, Morgur, and be a little bit more careful, since, well, you're not, uh, you're not to the strength level of Torox. Although Morgur himself is pretty darn strong. And his army, I mean. And Drenched in Blood, I think, was what we were going to do next, just for the campaign movement range increase. It's quite nice. And the more campaign movement range, the more we can replenish. So yeah, Drenched in Blood it is. And I guess the Bestial Rage can't be, uh, uh, can't be too bad either. You're going to replenish. We will destroy, I guess, with a quick little auto resolve this rebel, and then we'll hit Aleheart and then raise a uh, herd stone there. Can you do regular movement speed? Ooh, stance? Not so much. Mm, we should be able to still have enough movement to reach Aleheart right after, so go for it. I mean, with the raiding stance. Assuming that we can switch to raiding stance. Oh, wow, I don't know why the game lagged there for a second, or at least I was dropping frames. Uh, rip this thing apart with a quick little auto resolve. Oh, wow, that killed the bunch of our minotaurs this this garbage killed a bunch of our minotaurs really hmm that's a shame and we can barely replenish any of them huh well that's a shame but sacrifice those captives and enables poison attacks Ox Carrier. Not super useful on Torox in particular, as with the acquisition of Juggernaut, he gets dazed. Not that poison isn't, poison isn't great, but we can put it on somebody else. Uh, Morgur, I believe. Okay, yeah, Slaughterhorn Tribe Challenge completed. We'll deal with you in a second. And... Oh, we can build one of these? Yeah, that's fine, but uh, not what I'm looking for right now. Morgur, you have burnt applied. Is it naturally, or... Hmm. You could actually use a Banner of Eternal Flame, then, if you're applying that as well. Hmm. Is there not something that he applies... Art of Fury, Primal Fury, I swear that he had, a ah, Touch of Corruption, Contact Effect, there it is, damage over time, okay, yeah, so he should get that, rather than Burnt, but it also means that Poison ain't gonna be super helpful for him, which means we'll put it on you, sir, while you're on that little chariot of yours, and you can just ride around in the background poisoning jerks, or we can give the Poison Carrier to, or Pox Carrier to, a uh, Kazrak, or somebody along those lines. Uh, what do we have here, by the way? Still have that Skull of Katam and the Scepter of Stability, I don't care for the Scepter of Stability. We'll keep the Pigeon Plucker icon just for uh, Malagor's army, but I don't care about the rest of the stuff. Minus the Skull of Katam, so I guess we can't really transform stuff yet. Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you, are you able to hit Aleheart? Indeed you are. Uh, Alright, let's do this. Another auto resolve will not kill the Bully Boys. Good, good, good. I was concerned that it would auto resolve. Yeah, well, we're, we're gonna need to heal now. And then we will... Uh, have to raise the Herdstone. Hey, yeah, sort of strife, though. Nice pickup, there's the Herdstone, and this is a pretty good location for it as well. A Rampager for you, sir. It matters not how fast or so... What is this? Completed the Rampage Bar. Oh, it's just for completing the Rampage Bar. Oh, that completed the Rampage Bar, meaning we no longer have access to the Replenishment. But it does mean for a while we have access to this. The one we're going to use will be this one. 200 dread and 50% reduction for increasing capacity of Bray Shaman heroes. 
because those are the only ones we'll have access to. Like so. And we have this for five turns, so we'll try to get a new lord up and running soon. And oh, <laughs> yes, I guess we can get a new lord up and running immediately. Oh, that's funny. Because uh, I was going to... Okay, that didn't quite work out. Fine, fine, fine. You, sir, are going to go away now. Unless we have another capacity now. Uh, no, we do not. Alright, that's fine. Man, poor Surui. Surui doesn't get to uh, be on the field for more than a couple of seconds. Uh, wait, is it 1,200 still, or is it 1,500 now? Let's double check. Uh, not upgrades, lords and heroes. It's still 1,200. Malagor, get ready, buddy. Even though Kazrak belongs here where we're currently fighting, nonetheless. Our rewards of dread. Lords and heroes, I keep losing my place in this, uh, and this little menu, and then Malagor the Dark Omen. You're a caster, so you won't actually need a Bray Shaman, though. Funnily enough, if we raise Kazrak, damn it, we're gonna have to raise Kazrak, aren't we? <laughs> Plus, I guess he gets the buffs for Ungors, which is a little bit easier for him to, uh, to do stuff with, huh? Warhounds and Ungors early game stuff, he gets a good early game, fine. Kazrak it is. Malagor, sorry, you'll be the last. Uh, I take it that he's also wounded. We didn't get any new territories with him, did we? And, oh, we actually did. Bokel. Here. And he even built one of these. It's cute. What is this? What are you? Bloodfeather, Greenskins tribe. I uh, wonder if you'd be willing to give us some cash and... Oh, would you look at that? Kazrak actually has an army. Ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't have deleted Surui after all. Oh, well, sorry, Surui. All right, what do you have? No mutated warhounds? Oh, well, that's a shame. And I take it... Oh, you have a Bray Shaman building. That's fantastic. Do you have a Bray Shaman? You do, and it's a Bray Shaman of death, though. Kazrak should have a Bray Shaman of beasts. Uh, rotten passive ability regen. Huh, that's not... Uh, that's not bad. I'd like this on a Doom Bull, though. Unit mass and regen? That would be pretty nasty. I hope that you can get it on a Doom Bull. Uh, you still... You have the... Starting Bestigor Herd, you have a starting Razorgore Chariot, and you have a Minotaur, which I would love to transfer, but I think we're a little bit too far. Now, what I'd like to see is whether Kazrak is able to get the special building that allows him to build mutated Warhounds. No, I guess that's unique to his faction, which is a shame. So what he will need is more Hound capacity, which may mean another Den. Because, well, we need to be able to build the Hounds of Pestilence here. Or we could just content ourselves with the regular Hounds for now, but the Hounds of Pestilence are so much better. <laughs> uh, okay, well, either way. Kazrak, I guess you're stuck where you are currently, so keep doing your thing. This ritual is already completed, and it's already a blood ground. So is this, but we actually should protect this one. Uh, let's head Kazrak southward, then. To protect it. Wait, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Who's going where and who's doing what? Uh, Morgur. You have more horde recruitment capacity, so I think you're going to need to use it. So let's join you two together and... Oh! We're out of capacity. Oh, whoops. How did that happen? Oh, we went over capacity because Kazrak has some. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We could summon some harpies. You know, I really don't think Morgur is going to need Ungor Raiders. I just really don't think he will. No Ungor Raiders. At least not in this army. We're going to have some Ungor Raiders in an army. It just won't be this one. Uh, you can build four more things. So let's do that. Then let's do two Harpies here for now. And then two more. We'll need a little bit of a melee line. But since we can't do you guys, we will do... I guess these guys. We'll delete them pretty much ASAP. I'd love to transfer the Tuscorch area to Kazrak, but I think he doesn't have the building to build them. Yeah, he has the Bray Shaman building, and that's about it. Speaking of Bray Shaman, we're at 2 out of 1, so we'll need to increase our capacity a couple of times. And Tyrant is Ungwar buffs. Wait, I just want to see if there's anything crazy good here. Ambusher, Intelligent, Unsated, Bloodlust, Hello, Minotaur buffs. Uh, if we could get you on the field... We could possibly trade you with Torox and then send this guy to go to Morgur. Eh, hopefully he doesn't get milled through. 
At least over the next turn. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Uh, Aleheart, we don't care about you. And oh, wait, you're rank two? Huh? I never got the upgrade for the rank two. Did I? No. Why did this go up to rank two? Well, I guess something happened. Not complaining about it, but interesting. Might have been something to do with this. Army capacity plus two and horde construction rate, uh, herd stones... No, doesn't look like it. Well, either way. Unassigned skill points and then the turn, and let's keep on going. Alright, we just gotta generate enough dread over the next three turns to be able to get those Beret Shaman on the field. Increase their capacity and then get them on the field. Festus is the bestest, one of the factions that we actually would ally with to get our Nurgle army up and running. So you, sir, can give us non-aggression pact and military access. We'll join your war against Hawkland and whoever as soon as we're over there, but for now, just give us cash. Now that we have three legendary lords on the field, we're gonna need to be able to actually uh, build stuff with them. Yeah, I never thought that the money would be the biggest problem for beastmen of all things. I, I mean, I guess technically it's not money, it's Dark God's favor, but, you know. I absolutely love how quickly we can get so many lords on the field, though. Uh, minus five horde growth? No. A rival beast lord has called your a bray herd to war and demands that you join his ranks. Will you listen? Disregard the call. We need no bray herd to make our way in the world. We can create destruction and discord very well on our own. Sounds about right. Days of Wrath complete, getting that additional horde growth. And now we can get another tech. Uh, I like the missile resistance. What do we have here? Consume order gives us ma wins a magic cost reduction. Movement speed 15%. Yes. There's no question of it being anything else whatsoever. Uh, 150. How many? Just let me check here. 250 we need. Current cap 1. Damn, we gotta, we gotta speed it up. We gotta get more... Uh, I get him and get more of that stuff. Also, can't you upgrade now? No. Yeah, we still gotta get that upgrade. I guess we just got that one at level two. We gotta watch out for an army coming around. Hmm. Kaz, you have the heads on spikes, but you don't have the squalid encampment, which we'll need to build. But for now, I would like you to either. How far can you go through the woods here? What about regular travel? I can't quite tell. I'd like him to go into Hidden Encampment to start working on these territories. And maybe raise another herdstone somewhere here. Uh, Schopendorf? Hmm, not great. What about you? Allenhoff, is this a better one? Talibium? Yeah, maybe Talibium is the way to go. Oh, wait, what? Talibium doesn't include Geroiden? Oh, it doesn't include anything across the river. Oh, that's odd. Odd indeed. Grimmenhagen might be better, although it does get the, the stuff that we won't bother ourselves with. Mm. But yeah, I think this one's too distant, at least over here. Yeah, we'll go for Grimmenhagen. And just a regular... Wait, is, there isn't a special herdstone at Middenheim, is there? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't see a landmark spot here, so I guess it doesn't matter. All right, fine, fine, fine. You'd think uh, Kazrak in particular would like it. Uh, go out here, Kazrak. In your stance, as in an encampment stance, we'll do underway or whatever it's called in the next turn. Ah, uh, wait, go to raiding. Can you move further? No. Okay, fine. Go into a hidden encampment, and we'll need to upgrade you to tier 3 immediately. Like so, and we'll need to continue building up slash regenerating the troops that you have that took the most damage. So, you... You know what? If we can fight again, we can increase... Possibly some capacity. Uh, you. Can you reach Fastberg? No, you cannot. You're also still kind of damaged, but not so damaged. Go raid here for a turn. And then get right back to Waltdorf as quickly as you can, or whatever we're calling it now. 845. Can't complain about that. Hey, you, sir. Helmgart is an option, so we could declare war on the dwarves. Who are you fighting? You're fighting Clan Pestilence, but we don't know them, unfortunately. Hmm. If we knew exactly where they were... Wait, Clan Pestilence is all the way down here, aren't they? So there's no way that we're going to find them right now. Yeah, I guess we're just going to have to declare war on them. 
Helmgar, are you worth fighting? Now nah, there's basically no garrison there, but there is dread to be acquired, so let's still acquire that dread. Torx, is your army damaged? Oh, it is still quite damaged, eh? No, yeah, nonetheless. Oh, we probably won't be able to auto-resolve you. You know what? We might actually need to heal a little bit. Hmm. Alright, fine. Uh, do this. Go into Hidden Encampment. Oh, can you reach Blackstone Tower? I, I was thinking it might be worth fighting, but it's not really. An encampment right here. We can reach Blackstone Tower next turn. It'll hurt our bestial rage a little bit, but we'll be able to get a few of our units uh, more healthy, specifically the Minotaurs, which we can't afford to lose right now. Morgar is fine. Torax is fine. Man, it feels so weird not to attack on a turn, and but I guess that's what we're doing. Uh, let's replace you with a... I was almost tempted to get a couple more Warhounds, but I guess just one of these guys will do for now. And let's end the turn, and then we'll fight. Four turns of this. And yeah, we gotta we gotta get back here, like, now. Somebody's gonna attack this and take it, and we're gonna have to go all the way over here again. Yeah, as soon as we can get enough dread, I think we'll do a couple, well... Malagor or a couple of upgrades of the Herdstones. If we upgrade them enough, they'll be able to defend themselves without us constantly having to be worried about them getting destroyed. But since the AI is hanging around Altdorf, I'm willing to bet they're moving their armies towards there. You want a defensive alliance? And no. Were you fighting Wargrove of Woe still? No. Possibly for money, but we'll betray you, unlike the Chaos Forces, whose units we actually kind of want. At least somewhat. All right, come on now, nearly there. And we're looking good. A wild knight gives us leadership and causes chaos and undiv oh, less undivided corruption. Eh, knight of feasting, why not? The herd is noisome and disgruntled, more so than usual even. They resent having to worship the herd stone for yet another night and instead desire to feast and overindulge. What say you, lord? They could not be stopped now even if you wanted it. Revelry is in their blood. Let them feast. Let them be raucous. They will be grateful for it. Good for them. Alrighty, back to the... Hello. Little dwarfin army. Little tiny dwarfin army about to die. Uh, let's go into, I don't know, Beastman Ambush, I guess. I mean, obviously we're going to auto-resolve this. Even if it is a couple of giant slayers, we're still going to auto-resolve it. Because it's only two. Uh, you are still only at war like that, so declare war. Yes. Brux. Uh Watch our minotaurs get badly damaged by this. Please don't be. Ah, ambush. Let's see those minotaurs. Ah, okay, they didn't get hurt, but we still managed those 288 of the Ungors, but, well, you know, they're Ungors. Uh, let's kill the captives. It's not enough to be worth our time right now. And then... Exhausted the opportunities for destruction in these blood grounds. What are you talking about? No, we haven't. Blackstone Tower, Klesson, Marienburg. Ritual of Ruin available. They're not exhausted. We're at 10. It's gonna go way higher than that. Hey! Spawn Wrangler, hello. This is a follower. I take it an ancillary. Well, that's fantastic, but we're not gonna put it on you. Just put it on one of the shamans. I assume it doesn't have to be a lord? Oh, it does have to be a lord. Okay, well, Morgar. I know you like this sort of thing. Where's that Spawn Wrangler? Right there. All right. And you're trying to head towards your level 12 to get Ardor of Fury, but, uh, well, we'll get there eventually. Ooh, this will actually be worth a fight. And we'll have to be careful about getting killed by those elves. Hmm, all right. Kazrak, how is your army doing? A little bit damaged, but not so damaged, I think, that you can't fight Grimming Hagen. Uh, let's move right here. Won't be able to reach it this turn, but we will be able to raid it. Ah, look at that. Carl is back. It ain't Boris, but I think Kazrak will make do with what he's found. Also, you, sir, need a Bray Shaman's Familiar. And, ooh, you have a Trickster Shard. Not bad, not bad. Though, why did you go for Aspect of the Dread Knight over Soul Blight? What are you doing, AI? Uh, we probably won't be overcasting your spells as much as we would the uh, wild spells. So let's give you the Scroll of Leeching, perhaps. No, you know what? Skalafka Tam. Mm, probably better on wild, actually, than death. 
At least in the early forms, death is a little bit uh, weaker. And oh, Kazrak actually has his uh, has his weapon. Damn, I was hoping to do his quest as well. A bit of a shame. Scroll of Leeching for you, sir. And we'll do the Skull of Katam on you then. And I might you can keep the Book of Assure for now. Until we figure it out. All right, also we've got how many more turns of this? Three turns. Gotta get more capacity. But anyway, we have a potentially nice fight here for Morgur. And get a little bit more action for those centigors of his. So, let's pop you into Ruination Stance and let's head over to Fassburg. And then book it on back down to Altdorf. And destroy a few more enemies around. Specifically these guys as they'll be making their way northward. For now though, attack. Wait, wait. I forgot to give Morgur some stuff. Morgur, you can have a Sword of Strife. Buff yourself up a little bit. I don't think we have any enchanted items we can give you. Iron Curse Icon, not going to be helpful to you, especially since you have like 50, 60% missile resistance already. You're not quite immune to it, at least not like Grimgore is, who I think had 80% in my Grimgore campaign for now and probably will rise even further. Uh, but yeah. Also, you can now build more Chaos Spawn, which we definitely want to do. But for now, fight. Ooh, man, those guys might wait. If we're not careful, those elves might destroy our army. There's a lot of elves. If we get badly damaged, they will attack us. Eh, nonetheless. Uh, wait, would, should we raise a stone here? There's no special stones around here, I believe. The black pit is not a special stone. We could raise Fastberg. Though I guess the problem is a lot of this stuff has already been destroyed. The black bit would be a better stone, is what I'm getting at. It reaches further. Not mm. possible. And we would be able to get to the grog hooves if wolves run on the field. But anyway, for now, that makes no difference. What does is we're fighting this. Away we go. Alrighty, a slightly bigger army for Morgur to face off against, and not a damaged army. Add to that, so this should be considerably more challenging for his own relatively weak army compared to that of the uh, uh, that of the force that Boris brought to bear for Morgur's debut. Anyway, we've separated our force into multiple different uh, little uh, subunits. We got the harpies hanging around back here, hoping to hit those enemy mortars, the main line will move in directly towards the enemy force, so while the Tuscor chariots, together with all those warhounds, will try to loop around, get at all of those crossbows, and then the centigors, who were originally hidden in this in these trees, while the hounds were hidden in these trees, are going to charge the enemy from this side as well, hoping to hit the enemy from at least three out of four sides, effectively surround them and force them into a single blob and uh, destroy them. It looks like the AI does see what we're doing, but uh, doesn't quite know how to react to it, kind of for being forced to blob up even before we've engaged them, and, but I guess that works out reasonably well for us. And the Angors will be the first in, with of course uh, Mr. Morger leading the charge. And we do want to get him in there so that he can start applying his... Uh, uh, his chaotic aura, his mortis engine effect to everybody nearby. It does add up and it's a pretty darn decent aura. Anyway, the Angors will be joined by the unit of Chaos Spawn. We only have one uh, here, though another one does get summoned uh, by Morgur when the first enemy unit reaches low HP. And it's okay that we only have the one unit of monstrous infantry because we do have uh, the uh, Centigors, which count as bestial cavalry rather than monstrous cavalry. I guess due to their high numbers and uh, relatively small model size. 
And I do mean relatively. Anyway, it looks like our plan more or less worked. The Harpies absolutely obliterated uh, the uh, enemy mortars and a unit of crossbows and will now head in to try to do as much damage as they can to whatever they can find. They do have that bleed on them after all and have 48 melee attacks, so a fragile or not, uh, they can certainly dish out the hurt. As long as they're not facing off against something like uh, great swords, they can certainly uh, rip apart these pikemen and halberdiers. Though we do have to be careful about our warhounds and ungors, as they are quite fragile. And but they have always been. A bounce bar is about even very, very slightly in our favor at this point. And would you look at that? We're even getting a little bit of action in uh, the trees now, where the beastmen feel most at home. Alrighty, still fighting right in the center of the enemy with these piles of centigors and chaos spawn. We did also manage to surround the enemy lord with one of the units of centigors, and they brought him down to about 20% HP. I felt it was better to keep Morgur right in the center of the enemy formation to keep applying his mortis engine effect rather than having him bother running after the lord when we could simply use our centigors to assassinate him. Otherwise, Centigors are doing pretty good. This unit with the Great Swords is trying to dish out damage, and I do believe the battle will be ours relatively shortly. And some real nice shots of all of these units in these uh, wooded areas as well. I don't usually like fighting in the wooded areas, but hey, it's appropriate for Beastmen, and frankly, this one's quite nice. I like that it's uh, not super dark, and it's clear enough for stuff to be visible. Maybe we'll get some nice battles with the uh, herdstones at some point in the uh, uh, in uh, the world roots, etc. As it'll look quite nice. Anyway, with that, the enemy army will shatter. Didn't take all that long, but it did take longer than the previous two battles we fought in uh, this episode. And at four minutes, maybe a little over three minutes for the battle, as we did have to run up to the enemy. And it's a little over the standard time for short battles, so pretty good still. Plus, we got to try out our harpies, and by the looks of it, they were pretty darn effective, at least by the looks of how quickly they obliterated those uh, range units. I'll let uh, does do a little bit more damage, but otherwise, oh, we're good. Hey, heroic victory as well. Well earned, Morgur. Well earned. This is your debut episode, as after all, and uh, it's nice that you get to go out on a heroic victory today. All right, a nice little heroic victory for uh, Morgur here. He's still nowhere near rank 12, but he'll get there eventually. And got a free gleaming pennant for us, which may certainly come in handy for the uh, relatively uh, weak units. Plenty of damage dealt by the Harpies. In fact, at 20k, they might have dealt more damage than anybody else. Gotta love that uh, glass cannon bleed sort of type unit, and that can really help out. Of course, Morgur himself did more, but that's because of his personal Mortis Engine effect, which we will hopefully later on combine with the Mortis Engine effect of the Jabber Slave and the Mortis Engine effect of the Incarnate Elemental of Beasts to just have a massive amount of damage over time. Uh, uh, anywhere near Morgur and his abominations. Uh, we are going to go here and I guess we're gonna raise the herdstone. We're a little bit out of uh, herdstone capacity. Mm. The thing is, once again, this isn't a great place for it. Eh, maybe just loot and raise it. Screw it. We'll raise another herdstone elsewhere. Probably up here at the Black Pit. Even though it's kind of close to the other one. But nonetheless, it's, it's 2k. Uh, loot and raise, you're going to... Well, you know what? It's actually good that... Oh, wow, you backed off far. Uh, it's actually good that you backed off here. This is a place we want to be. Move back down. And I don't know that the elves can reach us anymore, which actually keeps you alive. I would like to send you back near to around Altdorf where you can... Ooh, Flare, post-battle chains of stealing and magic item, plus 12%. Nice. I would like for you... Carberg destroyed. I would like for you... <laughs> Uh, to A, get the Grog Hooves of Wolf's Run up and running and get those additional Chaos Spawn up and running. 
Hmm, I would like even more Chaos Spawn up and running, but we'd have to defeat your battle first. We also need to heal you up a little bit more. You are not healing nearly as much as Torok seems to be healing. Or was healing, because he's not healing as much anymore. We need a little bit more healing capacity. Also, how's our dread looking? We still need more for that Bray Shaman capacity. Yeah. Alrighty, and I guess, yeah, we'll... We'll get Grim... Grimminghagen as a herdstone here. And then maybe somewhere like Talabim or back to Wiedebach again. We'll just go all the way somewhere out right here. There's lots of places where we can raise a herdstone is what I'm getting at. And there is still another ritual to do here as well. Anyway, Torox, it's your turn, sir. Uh, let's head you to Blackstone Tower. Ooh, you can't reach it in Ruination, can ya? No, you cannot. You can in regular Beastman Ambush stance, so you wouldn't lose the... Uh, you wouldn't have the tired battle vigor. Uh, what do we have in terms of defenses nearby? Do we see a dwarf in full stack? No. What the heck are they doing? Okay, well, casualties low means there's no need to bother with this, but I would like to fight a proper full dwarfin army shortly, so I'll resolve this for now. And the Beast Banner. Weapon Strength and Missile Strength. Who does both missile and weapon damage uh, that we know of? Uh, that would be the Centigors with Throwing Axes. So we're going to give that to, I guess, Morger. You can... I'm, I know it's money, but I'm thinking we use rays in advance this time just for the replenishment. Maybe we might need to do the same with Morger as well. We really need the replenish. Uh, you go into raiding. Get a little bit further. We'll head to Grim Duraz next and then loop back around towards Karak Ziflin, Monfar, and then Helmgart. And then back around here, which should allow us to complete the ritual. Oh. We should grab Klesson and Marienburg as well. Okay, fine. Maybe we'll jump down to these things and then go over here. Makes sense to me. Let's give that beast banner, whatever it was, to you. Where are we? Uh... Ah, wait, are these two different gifts? Oh, they are. They're both called Gifts of Chaos, but they're different from each other. Neat. Beast banner. All right, and we can't get to your thing yet either. Uh, what we can do, I guess, is go into Hidden Encampment. Yeah, I know it'll cause us a little bit of a loss in our leadership, or not leadership, our uh, stuff. And since it looks like the elves probably can't reach us here, and in theory, probably don't know where we are, we'll get rid of these two Ungor Spears, we'll replace them with two Chaos Spawn. Only this... But didn't take two turns, we would build it. But not right now. Alright, the rest of this is fine. And just to double check everybody else, Kazrak, now you're good in raiding. We do need to massively adjust your army because it's probably the weakest one we have right now. As there aren't really any ringers in it. But oh well. Ooh, we're Words of Dread. Let's get to you for a second. We have 500 now, which means... Oh, we can't do it. Or is, or is it 500 each time? Bray Shaman 1. Yeah, it is 500 each time. Nope, the first two are 500. The second one is... The third one, rather, is 600. And But that was enough to give us this. You, sir, are going to summon a... Bra no, you can't build them. <laughs> All right, Morger, you are going to summon a Bray Shaman. Is this one still here? Yes, indeed he is. Unsated Bloodlust. Weapon strength plus 10% for Minotaur units. Funnily enough... I think I would have preferred the Bray Shaman of Beasts for uh, for Torox as well, mostly because Vissen's Wild Form, giving that armor, is counteracting one of the big weaknesses of the Minotaurs in that they don't have a lot of armor. Mm. And the Curse of Anor here is pretty much always nice. Pan's Impenetrable Pelt is also nice on the Minotaurs. I guess we could get both. If we could get both with Unsated Bloodlust, that would be fantastic. I wish these guys didn't cost so much mana, but anyway, here's what we'll do. We'll summon you with Unsated Bloodlust. Who knows if we'll ever get another one of these guys with Unsated Bloodlust. So we'll summon you, we'll send you all the way to Torox when he reaches him. We'll send Mr. Brabener back around to join Morger. Gonna be a lot of wild casters. 
But I feel like Wild and Beast is a pretty good combination anyway. Anyway, anyway, I believe we're ready to end another turn, though alas we don't have much in the way of time remaining. Nonetheless, building upgrade available, skip, unassigned skill points, skip, and end the turn. Alrighty. I think we'll probably have to save the contest between Carl and between Kazrak for next round. Oh, got stuck there for a second. Ah, a little uh, rebel army to destroy as well. And that'll give us additional dread, which we can use. And yeah, we gotta head down to Altdorf. Skitice probably wants us in the defensive line. Sorry, you're not even willing to pay us 2k now. No. We should try to get that defensive alliance going with Festus as fast as possible, and we should probably send Kazrak up north to try to find some other Chaos factions. We gotta get those alliances going with the Maesap so that we can uh, we can start gathering allegiance. Golden Order will confederate Vissenland, so Vissenland is no longer a threat to us because we're not currently at war with the Golden Order, uh, but we'll head down to Dukelberg and make sure that they don't spawn an army to take Altdorf away. Otherwise, I believe... From Duraz just to check. Eh, there's a few dwarfs there. We might fight them just for fun because it's not looking like these guys have a full stack. It might have died fighting something. Which unfortunately wasn't us. But I'd like to get a little bit of action against the dwarfs anyway. Anyway, anyway, with that we are basically out of time and I'm going to have to call uh, this episode here. Next time we continue our advance in every direction and perhaps get enough dread to get our fourth and final legendary lord on the field. Of course, we will need to get enough capacity for it, but we get more capacity here at 149, so two more rituals and we're already on the way for the first so I think it's certainly achievable. Anyway, more Beastmen to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold for the hour-long episode. And start getting those names in for non-Ungor units, because we're going to start getting the final forms, or at least mid-game forms of the armies, soon enough, which means the units will start getting their names. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.